Hello and welcome to We Random episode 47, recording on August 3rd, 2021. Hey Brian, why do dads feel the need to tell such bad jokes? Because it's their right and it's a violation of HIPAA to tell them not to. No, it's because they just want to help you become a grown-up. A grown-up. I'll be back after this. Almost Qualified Productions. Your dose of semi-coherent babbling. Welcome to We Random, episode 47. I'm Brian. That's Christopher. Say hello to the people, Christopher. What's up, everybody? As you all can tell from my uh, bit in the intro, I'm in a real spicy mood tonight. So <laughs> I like spicy I'm sorry, meat. old man Wiggum, but there will definitely be some four-letter words that come out of my mouth tonight, and I make no apologies except for those that might uh, prevent me from getting fired. Other than that, um, how's your week been, Christopher? What's going on? You know, it's been a productive week. I've gotten a lot of stuff done in the new place, and I uh, got the new fancy light up. Although it's kind of, you know, it should be it should be straight up and down like this. It's kind of sitting like this, so I'm a little concerned that it might fall down in the middle of the stream. So uh, let's hope that doesn't happen, and I'm going to have to try to fix that tonight or tomorrow. Well, for <laughs> those of you who are watching live, you know, that's something for us to watch for. For those of you who are listening to the podcast edition, you'll just have to listen for a big kaboom and a crash and a pow. And if that doesn't happen... And a whole bunch of know. swear words, because I guarantee I'm going to swear like crazy if it happens, because that's an expensive fucking light. That's uh, true. So... While we wait to see if the light holds its position, we have our wonderful Wheel of Doom with several topics from the Olympics to Simone Biles again, to some gaming companies, to LeBron and his pursuit to have an NBA G League team of 35-year-olds who all want a tar title chase. So um, any words of wisdom for our people before we go ahead and spin this wheel and get the good old podcast started, Christopher? <laughs> No, I say we just spin it up and go for it. Let us do that then. All right, I'm spinning it. Let's do it. We're going to start off with the Olympics. That's a pretty generic title. So what are we talking about with the Olympics? So we are talking about how the Olympics have become NBC's worst nightmare. With shocking upsets, unexpected exits, and a 16-hour time difference in several broadcast cable and streaming options, the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, which are being held in 2021, are starting to catch up with the NBC stable of networks. Ratings are down, and people are wondering why. Is it because of a lack of star power in events, the pandemic, or even politics? One writer in Utah believes that viewership is down as conservatives are not tuning in, feeling as though social justice is too much of a focus and that the young athletes believe their own feelings and needs supersede that of their team or nation. Others are feeling like the low ratings are due to the time difference and the fact that some of the more quote unquote marquee sports, such as the uh, U.S. men's basketball team, those Primetime viewings have been pushed to the Peacock app, trying to get people to subscribe to Peacock. So, Christopher, how do you feel about the Olympics? NBC fucked this up royally. So here's the thing. I love the Olympics. Like every four years, or I guess every two years, like I watch the shit out of the Olympics. I enjoy the Olympics. I enjoy the competition. I, I love all, you know, all the different weird sports that you don't really get to watch all that often. I mean, you probably could, but... Who's going to watch swimming if you're not in the Olympics, I guess? Uh, I mean, my buddy Todd would if he's out there. But other than him, I don't think there's anybody. So, like, I, I get all in on the Olympics. But here's the thing. We have to look at what the world is today. And the world today is online. It's, it's streaming. It's social media. So, you know, my phone pops up the second that, you know, X, Y, and Z happened. Oh, my God, the Olympic, you know, the men lost, the men's basketball team lost to France. I knew about it before I could even watch it. And here's the other thing is they've got, NBC has so many different avenues to watch these shows. Like so many different channels they have. They've got the app, they've got all of this stuff, but there is no easy way to figure out where to go and when to watch and what to watch. 
I've got YouTube TV, so I've got access to just about everything, and I've got all the apps and all of that. And when the when the Olympics started, I pulled up YouTube TV to try to find stuff that was on, and I couldn't find anything. Like that first weekend on Saturday, I, in fact, I even put a, a freaking post out on Facebook or Twitter that said, today all I'm going to do is smoke cigars and watch the Olympics. And I think there's one other thing, but that's all I'm going to do. Smoke cigars, watch the Olympics. You know what I did? I smoked cigars because I couldn't fucking find any Olympics to watch. Like it was, it was, it's so frustrating. It should be so, so simple and it's not. And I don't understand how you fucked this up so bad. I mean, my whole thing with it is there are so many people who are just bewildered and frustrated that they tried to push all of these things to Peacock to get the, you know, six bunks a month out of people yeah. so that they could watch things in real time because yeah, you can watch the, you know, basketball stuff in real time, but it's only on Peacock. You can watch this event, but it's only on Peacock, which again, it's a money grab. Did it work? Definitely not. Like, you know, what are they showing these days at 2 a.m. on the local NBC affiliates, the 700 club or like, oh God. you know, the sham wow, or like, I don't know what they're showing at 2 a.m., but they could be showing the Olympics and then they could reshow it in prime time, right? Like yeah. you could hit both of these markets but instead they said well let's try to get the peacock subs and get people to spend the you know six dollars a month to watch this and it failed because people are too frugal and they just don't want to do that well it's the wrong fucking time to do it for god's sake i mean like everybody's losing their fucking job uh and i i guess part of the problem too is um like you paid so much money for the rights to this like you you can't screw this up like, I, I don't have a problem with using the app as the hub on where to find it stuff, but it shouldn't tie you to that app or allow people to use it free and just give them advertising. Like, you could do that too. But like have a social, like, a, like a, a, a central hub where I could go and I can look at the app and say, okay, so what is live right now? Well, there's swimming and there's basketball and there's badminton and there's gymnastics. Well, I want to watch gymnastics. So if I click on that, just take me to where I need to go or tell me where it's at. Okay, you can watch this on TNT. Great. I'll log into fucking TNT and I'll watch it. But they don't have anything like that. So you have to hunt and peck and try to find stuff to watch. And I, you just don't watch anything. I mean, it's, it's just... Emily commented too. I, have the, I, I had the app prior to the Olympics, tried multiple times and can't find any competition. It's just... It's stupid. They, they, this, this should be so, so simple. And the fact that they screwed this up is mind boggling. Not shocked, but yeah, I don't disagree with you at all. Somebody needs to get fired. I'm spinning the wheel. Speaking of people need to get fired. Oh, it's the brewers. I mean, that works too. <laughs> I mean, uh, I figured, I figured whatever TV? story it was, somebody needed to get fired. So apparently we're firing someone on the Brewers. All right. Well, let's talk about your Milwaukee Brewers. They were very active during last week's MLB trading bonanza. The Brewers acquired third baseman Eduardo Escobar, relievers Daniel Norris and John Curtis. They also acquired 2011 hero John Axford, who may now miss time with an injury. These moves were in addition to the prior in-season moves for Willie Adamas, Rowdy Telez, and others. So where are we at right now with our good old Milwaukee Brewers, Christopher? How are you feeling? What are your thoughts, hopes, aspirations? They fucking suck. No, I just, we, we haven't used that sound in a while, so I had to use that. Um, I, I think, Esco, like most of these guys, I don't know who the fuck they are, to be honest. Um, Escobar seems like he'll be a good fit. I mean, he hit a ball to the moon last night or two nights ago or whatever it was. Um, so he seems like he'll be a, a good fit. Again, he's, it kind of reminds me of the, uh, was it this year or last year where it's like, you have 712 outfielders. You don't need that many outfielders, whatever the case may be. Um, I mean, they're going to have to manufacture ways to get him into games. Like you can't take Willie Adamas out. Is that the guy I'm thinking of? Yeah. Cause like he's, well, just he's, hits he's everything. a corner guy. So he's, he's like first and third. So you're looking at, he's going to be kind of splitting that time at third with Urias. And then like first he's splitting time with Rowdy Tellez. Cause they kind of fired Keston here into the sun. And now Which they should Keston, have. he has COVID anyway. So he's gone for a while. <laughs> Half the fucking and, team does, but 
Daniel Vogelback is still hurt, so they, th- he he's going to have plenty of opportunity to play. And if well, they're going to have to try to move up. him in though, right? Because they want to play all these yeah. guys, and you can't do that. So they got to find places for him. Um, yeah. I mean, the reliever guys seem okay. I mean, the one guy's got an ERA of like twelve or some shit like that. Like I don't. Oh, but in his last well, ten games, his ERA is one point four. I don't give a shit. Well, like for the season, he's been shit. Well, it was interesting because that was your guy, your guy, uh, and we don't have to name drop him, but he posted something on Twitter and he was like, so in the beginning of the season, Daniel Norris was throwing his change up this percentage of the time, but now he's throwing it only this percentage of the time. And that's the difference. And I'm like, actually, that's kind of cool. Like, I like that kind of stuff. Is that the guy I got into a Twitter biff with? It is. Oh, that was great. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that but, was fun. I don't even like, remember what it was I like about. that kind of stuff, honestly, because that yeah. stuff matters. Like if a pitcher is varying up what he throws and when he throws it, like that, that matters. Like we can't yeah. say that that doesn't matter, but it was just kind of an interesting kind of correlation, whether it's actually factual or not. But Well, and that's exactly the kind of thing that if it is true that the brewers would jump on, right? Because, yep. because the way that they do their analytics, they look at fucking everything. And so if it's something where they can look at it and say, hey, this guy wasn't throwing his, his change up and look in the last two months he has been and look how he's improved, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Or, or we see something that's impact that we think is impacting it, we might be able to do something to, to help that. So, you know, yeah. the brewers are going to have to buy low for the most part. They're not going to be able, I mean, a dollar for Axford for fuck's sake. Like they're not going to be able to, you know, spend a whole bunch and go get Max Scherzer and whoever else. So... Um, I don't know. I, I maybe it'll work out. I think I think they did okay. They weren't going to get a huge name. I know there's there was talk about them being in the running for Scherzer and Trevor Scherzer Story, who never got moved. Trevor Story um, and Bryant, even like people yeah, wanted them. They were never going to trade Bryant here, but. Well, and people even wanted them to kick the tires on like Jose Barrios and like some of these other guys who got dealt who have like a year or two left on their yeah. deals too. But again, they're going to cost you extra too because you're getting extra yeah. time. So well, like. Curtis is one of those guys where he's got another yep. year on the deal. And like, I feel like they did well. Like this is a totally like Stearns brewers. We've got these guys who are really like the whole is better than the sum of the parts. Let's kind yeah. of see how they do. Like they even claimed another guy like Sal Romano today. And like, <laughs> I remember dude from when he was with the reds and it's like, all right, like he's another arm. So like, they're just basically going to keep this whole churn going where it's like they bring them in they take them out they bring them in they take them out but i mean it's really interesting right like they're they're their strategy and i think a lot of people and i can feel like i say can safely say you included would have been like you needed to get me a bat right but like they can't fucking hit of course they need a bat like escobar helps but i'm also feeling like their perspective is we're getting lorenzo kane back hopefully we're getting christian yelich back and that's where they're hoping to get those bats from, but, so but, that if they, but but, you know, but I'm not saying it's right. But, 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 I'm just but, saying that this is their brain. Neither of those fucking guys are hitting either. I mean, like you would like to assume that Yelich is going to hit at some some point, but neither one of those guys are hitting. So 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 your your solution for we're not hitting is hey, guess what? We're getting two back two guys back who aren't hitting. Like no hitting plus no hitting doesn't equal hitting. That's not how this works. That's bad math. So, but we, we, do you we, want to hear another fun? Do you want to hear another fun math problem? Sure. So there was a Twitter post that I saw, and I think I shared this with you, but it was about Jackie Bradley Jr. And they're like, <laughs> <Yes>. "Good news, <laughs> Jackie Bradley Jr. is now back in a neutral war, where he's at like zero point zero percent." Explain However, explain war real quick for those who. So are, wins above replacement is basically. Baseball uses a wins above replacement metric where they look at this is just a replacement, like general, like average dude. And if you're in the positive, that means that you're probably a little bit better than average. If you're in a negative, then you're a little bit below average. And basically, he's now back at a neutral war. And basically, what war takes into account is both your offensive value and your defensive value. So if you're a really good defender, or a really good offensive player that helps you. If you're really bad on one of those, it hurts you. So for Bradley, they're like, the problem with him now being back at neutral is that he's basically a plus seven defender, (laughs) which means that in order for him to just be neutral, he has to basically have the worst bat in the league right now. Yeah. yeah. So that's what we got, but we got him. So we don't need anybody else to hit. 
I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see how this progresses. And I'm hopeful. So we'll just have to see how the next month plays out. Obviously the COVID stuff with them is really yeah. raging right now. And it, I don't know, it's, it's just weird because, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a science experiment basically. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> we can, maybe we can cross our fingers and just hope that COVID burns its way through the clubhouse in the next month. People aren't super negatively impacted. And then, you know, we'll be healthy when everybody else gets hit with COVID in a couple of months in the playoff push. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Wiggum says they are a small market and they're managing that to its fullest, which I agree. Yep. I, I, mean, I agree. Would I love to have seen them get Scherzer? Absolutely. Did I think that there was any kind of a chance? Not at all. And he's not a yeah. bad either, but still, you get the point. So I'm spinning. All right, do it. Emily really wants to hear about Coca-Cola. Well, we'll see. But first, we're going to talk about Quinn Ewers. I didn't read this article, so I need to skim it quick. It's fine. I, I can give you the quick uh, sum. So Quinn Ewers is a high school student right now, but maybe not for long, who is going for that Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott, feed me of the week. So let me let me give you the setup here. With his bleach blonde mullet and more than 82,000 Instagram followers. Oh my Corbett, God. I'm sorry. Corbett. I just saw this mullet. Holy <laughs> shit, people. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up a picture. Wow. Nice. Okay, go on. So quarterback Quinn Ewers is the best known high school football player in the country. He's the number one overall recruit and is a verbal commit to Ohio State. This week, he made the decision to skip his senior season at South Lake Carroll, a public high school in the suburbs of Dallas, Texas. Ewers has emerged as such a recognizable star that he has the potential to earn nearly a million dollars in the next year by profiting off of his name, image, and likeness. A local company called Holy Kombucha is among those offering him a deal, and it includes cash and equity in the company. There are several other offers from national brands as well. However, bump, 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 Texas University's Interscholastic League informed Evers and his family that any attempt to profit off of his name and image and likeness would be in violation of Texas's recent legislation regarding name, image, and likeness. So, because this student actually was ahead in his high school classes, he is able to finish his high school requirements online this summer and enroll at Ohio State for the fall 2021 term, bypassing his senior season and opening up the eligibility immediately to be able to earn that ZE money. So, I really thought that this was interesting because this is a perfect example of how you know, these athletic places and look at like people always talk about how Texas high school football is like the hugest thing in high it's school religion. football, right? Yeah. Like they are using these athletes and who's making money? Not the, the schools athlete. Yeah. and the people, not the athlete. This kid could make a million dollars, but they're like, Oh no, that violates. Nope. Good. I'm glad that he was actually on top of his athletics, on top of his academics, can finish school early and go to Ohio State and make that money. Now, there's a lot of things that are going to be very interesting, right? Because if this dude's not physically developed in X, Y, Z and whatever, like he might have a tough time in college. We don't know. But the fact that he has opened up this opportunity to make this money, I feel like is great. Because honestly, when we talk about this name image likeness stuff, the way that I think about this is we are teaching young entrepreneurs a lot more by allowing them to make deals and brand themselves and go through all of these processes than we would by coddling them through this system that basically makes bank off of their name image and likeness. Yeah, I, I mean, first of all, that's a first-class fucking mullet right there. And then the fact that it's bleached the way it is, like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I really don't want to use the term trailer park trash, but let's be honest, that's, that haircut is straight out of some trailer park in, like, Central Texas or something. Anyway, uh, I have a lot of thoughts on this. So, so A, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of follow in what you're saying is, you know, if he's in a position where he can do this, you know, the rules allow this or, and he can, he can adjust things as he needs to. Um, you know what, in life, you got to go get yours. It's just that simple. Like, like you got to, you, you got an opportunity strike. I mean, you got to do what's best for you. 
my concern is, is this really what's best for him? Because like, first of all, I, I, I think that most public education is most education period, you know, college before college is just wasted. Like there's so much garbage education out there. There's so much shit that's pumped down people's throats. Who the hell cares? Right? Like most of it is bullshit, but but the years that you spend during school is super important. The years that you spend in college, I think are super important to help you find yourself. Brian brought up the point is, is his body matured enough? I mean, remember, I mean, it's probably been 15, 20 years ago now, Maurice Claret, who was, you know, wanted to go to the NFL straight out of high school and he had to go to Ohio state and he played what one year, two years. And he's like, I'm ready. I'm going to do it. And he goes to the NFL and he got his fucking ass destroyed. He just wasn't ready. He just, just physically wasn't ready. And I would say that his head wasn't ready either. Is that what this kid's going to run into? Because could he, you know, go to college for a couple of years and then go to the NFL before he's 20 fucking years old or, or right around 20 years old? Is his body matured enough where he's going to get, you know, like there's, there's a lot of questions there. And um, I also look at the fact that, and, and this happens a lot more in the NBA, which is why I believe they changed their rules on kids coming out straight out of high school is, you're setting people up for possibly one hell of a fucked up life. Because if let's say this kid who, who apparently everybody's over the moon about, they think he's the next coming of John Elway or something. But what if he goes to college and, uh, you know, blows out a knee and he can never play again? Or what if he makes it to the NFL, but he's only making a veteran minimum because he's, he stinks in college. What if this kid doesn't have the opportunity or doesn't take the opportunity to, to educate himself and get into a position where he can be successful in life without football. Like there's a lot of pitfalls there and I agree it's on him and, and, and on his support system to figure that out and to make sure that, that he's ready for all of that. But I guess that's the precedent that concerns me a little bit, but it sounds like from what I, what little bit I read that he can finish his college credits or his high school credits over the summer, I believe, and enroll yeah, right yeah. away at Ohio state. Like if his academics are at that point, I mean, go for it. What the hell? You might as well yeah, take that like chance. That, it's just the precedent like, that it sets worries me a little bit. Well, that's where I was concerned because I was like, how is this dude just going to skip his high school and then they're actually going to admit him to college? But then when it's like, okay, so he's on top of his academics, so that's great. But And I get where you're coming from with the precedent, but one of the biggest piece here is then he has a nest egg to fall back on. So many of these athletes who go to college and they're not getting paid, they're not getting this. You have no nest egg to fall back if on. If he makes his actually... millions over the course of the next year or whatever, yes. Right. So like that's that's the part of this that I'm interested in. It's like, hopefully he has someone around him, a team of people, or at least a person to help him understand how to use this investment that he is being given right yeah. like that's the kind of stuff that i would like to see with the name image likeness stuff is that somebody's out here like teaching these people kind of like they you know supposedly do in the nfl where like right. when you're a rookie you come in and they sit you down and like all right you got this money now here's what you're supposed to do here's what this means here's how this is gonna be i hope that somebody is going to be sitting down these people not necessarily to do the whole like we're better than you we know what you need to do but more like to be helpful and to say what do you know about how to you know deal with this type yeah. of income because you know i i deal with 18 year olds every day who they've never seen a check bigger than a thousand dollars in their life and they're taking out these student loans and you know that it's not good in the long term for somebody to be taking that money but how are you supposed to talk them through that when they've yeah. never seen a check with their name on it well, bigger than yeah. what's in their hand right now right like these are the things that i hope that you know name image likeness can do is that they make these athletes who have taken an opportunity to build their brand for better or for worse they then have an opportunity to not end up like the litany list of athletes that we can list who you right. know blew through their entire fortune or they were to hot stuff in college and then they flamed out of the nfl or the nba or mlb for whatever reason right like yeah. this in some ways is a hopeful thing even though that sounds kind of weird yeah and i know that you deal with 18 year olds every day maybe i do too b anyway old man wiggum says uh this wasn't possible uh, just a year ago because they, the NCAA just changed those rules uh, maybe a month ago. We talked about that here on the podcast. So 
That definitely yep. made yeah, this, this possible. Very new. All right, spinning the wheel. Off the press. It's hot. Hot. Make that cache. All right, who are we firing next? We're gonna fire. Oh, B. Oh, B. So we're gonna fire me? Okay. No, no. No. Hold on. B wants to fire a lot of people on this one. I think we need to take some deep breaths. Please wait. Please wait. <laughs> okay. The wee random dick, dick, dick of the week. As the University of Wisconsin system campuses call their employees back to campus this August, some Republican lawmakers plan to prevent system campuses from imposing mandatory COVID testing, masking, and vaccination protocols. Senator Steve Nass, representing Whitewater, has moved to require that UW system schools gain approval from the legislature's GOP controlled rules committee before enacting any virus related requirements. Now, this decision happened today in a meeting that was virtual, that was decided on party lines six to four, that the UW system needs to ask the GOP controlled rules committee before they enact any COVID protocols on their campuses. Former Republican governor and current UW system president Tommy Thompson said, in response, the biggest threat to in-person classes this fall will be actions that strip the UW system of the tools it has so successfully utilized to address outbreaks and reduce the spread of COVID-19. So, do you want me to kind of start on this? Do oh, I'm not jumping thoughts? in front of you on this train, baby. This one's all You're you. Not? No. So, I, I'm going to honestly try to remain calm because I have had a split feeling 50-50 of rage and dread all day with this, right? So this man, Steve Nass, comes out and says that by making this decision that the UW system campuses need to ask this GOP legislature that has not advocated for any COVID restrictions this entire time, these people who refused to meet for months upon months upon months upon months that the UW system needs to ask permission to have COVID protocols in place. Yet, they're also saying the UW system needs to call back their employees to these campuses to meet with students in person, to teach classes in person in lecture halls that hold 150, 250, 300 people at any given time for lengths of 50 minutes, 175 minutes or longer. This is asinine. I, I could yell, I could scream. I prefer not to get fired because I told my wife that I would keep my job and I'm going to keep my word on that. But this literally is feeling to me like we are being led into a public health disaster to satisfy people. And that to me is disgusting because we are people who try to take care of other people. We are people in this education specter who try to help lift other people up. And you push us down like we don't matter. You say, oh, well now people get to make a voluntary educated decision based on their own personal situation. I don't get to make a decision. I didn't get to decide any of this. So how are you going to sit there and fix your mouth, sir, and say that? That's disgusting to me. I just wanted to let that sit for a minute. Um, I think old man Wiggum had a good point. It was six fucking people that voted for this shit. Sorry, that was a throwback to last week. Anyway... Um, I am not employed by the UW system, um, nor the state of Wisconsin. So I, I will be more free in saying this guy can suck at, well, you know what I'm, you know where I'm going. This fucking guy, like, and, and to B's point, you know, one thing that he called out was they have not passed any legislation to, you know, to help with COVID. And I don't remember your exact words, but it's, it's worse than that. These, these people, the, the, the GOP in this state have actively worked against it. Keep in mind, last year, when we were dead in the middle of a pandemic, 
They are the ones that insisted that voting had to happen in person. They are the same people that closed down a vast majority of the voting polls to try to swing things to their direction. And then, of course, Robin Voss, that motherfucker, goes out and says, well, I'm going to go to the polls so you can too. This motherfucker's wearing a hazmat suit, for fuck's sake. Like, these people are so disgusting. Like, beyond disgusting. Um, and, and to B's point, like, they're, they're talking about how it should be, it is perfectly safe. You can go back to your goddamn job, Brian, and you can work there in person. And people can decide themselves if they want to wear a mask, if they don't want to wear a mask, if they want to get vaccinated. That's their choice. It'll be fine. And I'm going to tell you that from behind my computer in my office, in my fancy house, that you can't come close because I'm in a gated community. Go fuck yourself. You can clip that shit and send it to them. Like, this this is disgusting. Like, this is disgusting at, at, at the worst level. I mean, and this is just as things are getting worse. Like, things yeah. are getting worse right now. And they're like, well, let's open it up even more. This is... Dude, this like, is so, I, so, wrong. so I feel like I kind of blacked out. I don't even remember what I said. I, I kind of, <laughs> my brain just went after I was like, Annie. But the biggest part about this, right, is we're giving these people what they want. They said, we want you to be in person. We want in-person classes. These are the things that we want. Why is it such a difficult ask to ask everybody to work together and be reasonable? If we're coming over here and saying, yep, we're going to give you this in-person learning, we're going to give you these in-person student support services, why is it so hard to say, let's all work together and, you know, socially distance and wear masks and be proactive? Instead, no, it's like we give you this inch and now you want to take a mile. And then you say, well, each independent person gets to make their own decision. Like, I don't want to be that person who surrounds myself in a plexiglass house, but part of me wants to do that now just to make a point that if you want every individual person to be able to make their own independent decision, I'll wear six masks. I got six masks. Like, what do you want me to do? You know what I mean? Like, we're trying to be rational, but we're dealing with people who are being irrational. Like, I, I personally think a- you should get a big piece of plexiglass and, and like, tape it to your office door and just say, I will meet with students, but they're going to talk to me through the plexiglass door. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. And, and let's be honest to your point about why are they doing this? It's the same reason they do fucking everything. It's politics. It's all fucking politics. Cause what happens when all of a sudden Wisconsin has the biggest COVID cases every single, every day, what are they going to do? Well, fucking governor, what are you doing? Why aren't you fixing this? You didn't have a fucking thing to do with this. This is you making stupid decisions, but they'll just shift it that way. And the people that vote that way generally are a bunch of fucking idiots. They'll just fall in line. Oh my God, Evers is such an idiot. Look at the way that, you know, these liberal campuses are blowing up with the virus. Everyone's getting sick and dying. And we need to make sure we vote that guy. It's politics. It's all politics. And the fact, the fact that they are willing to gamble with people's lives for political and financial gain, there is nothing more disgusting than that. Nothing. Right. Like, like that's the thing. It's like people are literally being led to these campuses yeah. and being put in an experiment, right? Like all of the folks on the, on the one side want to talk about comparing X, Y, Z to X, Y, Z, but this is the actual experiment, right? Like they're saying you have to go to work and you have to put yourself at risk for my entertainment. Yeah, it, the whole thing is is very very disgusting, and you know you can only hope that that they're going to you know come to their senses. I don't think it ever will. I mean, look how much that they had to be fought against, you know, tooth and nail against every single thing. And I just they're never going to change it, and and just have to hope that maybe some sense prevails. I don't I don't know how that works. I I I would I would be fired, hundred percent, or I would quit my job. Trust me, I I had those thoughts with my company. And I don't think I've ever talked about who I work for because that doesn't matter. But um, like my company has taken a super, super progressive state. I am flabbergasted. My, C- my CEO wrote this great big story on uh, LinkedIn about the approach they're taking. And I made sure to comment and dude, thank you so much for what you did. Because they're way more progressive than I've ever, ever seen them be. But I was ready. I was completely prepared. I've been at this company for over 13 years and I was ready to walk out the door if, if they decided that they were going to put my life in jeopardy and force me back when I don't need to be back. And I'm not saying that Brian needs to make that stance. I'm not saying that him or, you know, the other people that are around need to do that. But uh, I mean, they're, they're going to run into that. And 
I mean, I, mean, I, I would to, not. I would they not need be to, able honestly, to handle it because, like that, it, it's just the. I I don't have words for it, honestly. I haven't had words for it all day, and I don't now. That's fair. Let's spin and get mad at something else. Who are we firing this time? Oh, it was so close to Coca Cola for Emily. Instead. Uh, well, actually, somebody got fired today around this one, so that's kind of funny. But uh, oh, I didn't know that somebody got fired today. Yeah, yeah couple, two not. people actually, two people. So this is uh, Ubisoft, right? This one is Blizzard. Oh, I mean, they, we could oh. we could kind of talk about them together because it's really the same story. All right. So employees at Blizzard Entertainment staged a walkout last week following the Activision Blizzard lawsuit filed by the state of California. The lawsuit focuses on gender-based discrimination and harassment. For those who couldn't attend the in-person event, there was a virtual event that took place in World of Warcraft where players conducted a mass logout at the time of the in-person walkout. So basically what's happening here is that Blizzard employees were protesting and advocating for the safety and equality of women, in particular women of color, transgender women, non-binary people, and other marginalized groups. In response... Blizzard hired a law firm called Wilmer Hale to review their policies and procedures. This law firm has a union busting history, notably being used by Amazon to prevent its workers from unionizing. Some say the choice to bring in this firm raised many red flags and made already skeptical employees concerned about the sincerity of Blizzard's statement that the company wants to do a better job of listening now and in the future. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that happened here. So um, basically the state of California has, is, is suing this company because they have all these different reports and evidence of all this um, horrible, misogynistic, abusive assault behaviors that are happening. Um, one woman allegedly killed herself because she was on a business trip with one of her leaders and there was some shenanigans going on and she just killed herself over it. Um, it's just, there's all sorts of horrible, horrible things. If you, if you look for, and I could even play the clip. If you look for, um, I don't know, just look for blizzard video clip or something video, video con BlizzCon. You'll, you'll find a clip of this woman who, who asked the question and says, Hey, you know, is it, is it, and she asked it much nicer than I will, but you know, is it possible that we can get some female characters who aren't just walking around in bikinis who, who she said, who do not look like they stepped out of a Victoria's Secret catalog. And there's a panel of developers from Blizzard, and what was the response? What catalog do you want them to come out of? What? And here's, here's the thing, too. So as she's answer, as, asking this question, there is like a very, very small amount of probably women who started clapping and cheering, and then immediately were just droned over by all the guys in the audience booing the shit out of her question. And then all the guys on the, in the, in the, uh, on the panel just made jokes for, you know, two minutes or something back of what, what, what catalog should they be in? Blah, 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 blah. Completely disregarded everything she said. I mean, it was very, very evident just at that point that there's a lot of shit going on. And this lawsuit from California, like, goes back 10 years or something. So there's all sorts of shit that's happening at this company. And their initial response when this lawsuit filed was, you know, the normal kind of bluster that you hear from a company. Oh, we're going to do what we, we're going to take care of stuff and make sure this never happens. And long story short, the, uh, the people, there's, there's a, a walkout on Blizzard earlier this week. I think maybe late last week. Um, today, their president stepped down with pressure, of course. Uh, their senior vice president of HR stepped down. Uh, I think there's going to be a whole lot more people who are, Gonna, gonna gonna go away um but the thing the, the biggest reason to talk about this more than anything obviously this you know I, the, the stream is about gaming the podcast a lot is about gaming and streaming um this is commonplace in the industry and that's that's what's probably most disgusting of all of this even even the woman who who may have killed herself because of this abuse the thing that's most disgusting is all the avalanche of stories that you heard from all these other different studios and don't get me wrong activation yeah. blizzard is not the first studio to get into kind of this issue and that's where the ubisoft story came from they had the same thing like a year or two ago 
And uh, they wrote a letter of solidarity because after their stuff blew up, nothing changed. It's the same old shit, right? right? So the, the biggest thing is you see how evident this, how pervasive this is in the gaming industry. I mean, heck goes back to Gamergate, which we won't get into because we talked about this a lot already. But that's something worth worth researching. Look up Gamergate. And it's just women are treated so fucking horribly in the gaming industry. It is disgusting. Fuck, you see it here on Twitch. I mean, just I mean, go into a woman's stream or just go to a woman's stream and watch the way that people talk to her. It's it's fucking disgusting. I mean, let, let's take this to the world, right? And I'm going to kind of tangent, but we random. That's what we do here. So I know an individual who in 2020 had a situation at work where a supervisor made unsolicited comments about her body. Hmm. She went to HR about it. What did HR do? Probably nothing. They moved her to a different position. Oh, yeah, there you go. And asked the CEO to apologize to her, which the apology was, I'm sorry that you were offended at my joke. Oh, yeah, there you go. I'm sorry so that you were offended. It's, it's, yeah, it's the typical prototypical, I'm sorry that you were offended. Yeah. Not actually holding people accountable. And that was part of the Ubisoft story where they were saying that they wanted people held accountable because oftentimes it is that thing where people don't get fired, people don't have sanctions, the people who report are the ones that get moved out to a different job. The people who yep. come forward are the ones that have the sanctions put against them or have the X on their back, right? Like we as a society need to change this mentality. And I don't know what we do, but we have to be the people who continue to talk about it and continue to bring it up and acknowledge that it's still there because a lot of places in this society use this object permanence thing where, oh, now I don't see it. It's not there. It's not impacting me. I don't see it, Yeah, I, but it's I, there. I think, I think the answer to your question is the way that we make inroads on this is the same way we make inroads on systematic racism. Is that guys like me, guys that look like me, the white guys, we need to speak the fuck up. Like, because it's, it's, it's when, 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 you know, I almost said Joe, but we know a Joe, so that would be bad. So if Bob at work decides to make a joke disparaging women or disparaging black people or disparaging LGBTQ people, if I don't say something, silence is acceptance, right? I'm, 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 I'm saying it's okay for you to have that, that kind of an attitude. I'm, I'm saying it's okay for you to treat people like that. If I see somebody, you know, unsolicitedly grab somebody and I don't say something, I'm saying that's okay. And, and, and I say specifically white guys, I mean, all of us need to say something, but the white guys, that's, that's, let's be honest, like, we're the assholes here. We're, we're the club. We're the, we're the, we're the special club. We're the club that, that generally is the ones doing a lot of this shit. And we have to hold ourselves accountable. We have to hold each other accountable because until we do that, the shit's just going to keep happening. So I guess that's the action item for all of us, whether you're a white guy or not, but especially if you're a white guy, we need to speak the fuck up. That's what we need to do. And that, that's how we can hopefully start to make some change. Fair enough. Well, do Already we spin. want to? Oh, I was going to ask you if you wanted to do Coca Cola for Emily. Oh, do we want to? How much time? Where are we at? We're almost to an hour, and we still got to do random ranking. So. All right. Well, we're not. We're going to skip Novak here, and we're going to do Coca Cola because Emily wanted to know about Coca Cola. So, B, what is it about Coca Cola we want to talk about? I mean, we could talk about your new friend, uh, New Coke Zero, some more. But we should probably start with actually, that. Should we start with that? This, well, this actually stems from it does, the New Coke it does. Zero. So I, I if have you one right here, it, by the way. If you missed it, loyal listener and loyal viewer, Skonzi and I last week did a taste test of the old Coke Zero and the new Coke Zero. And Skonzi put out a video about that. You can find that on YouTube, by the way. Link is in the and chat right now. On that video, Skonzi started getting some comments such as, quote, I'm too white to drink Coca-Cola. Yeah. And he was very confused. So we figured out that people are still mad online about Coca-Cola's anti-white rhetoric because this past spring, Coca-Cola came under fire for promoting reverse racism and anti-white rhetoric after a diversity training seminar included slides urging employees to, quote, try to be less white. 
The training was part of a course called Confronting Racism that was held in association with American academic Robin D'Angelo, the author of White Fragility, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism. A few of the slides in question urge Coca-Cola employees to be less oppressive, less defensive, less ignorant in their dealings. It was sent to Coca-Cola staff to help build an inclusive workspace. The one of the slides also said to, quote, be less white. So apparently people are holding their grudge on that, similar to how I hold my grudge against name of furniture store redacted. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to very quickly load up the uh, PowerPoint here. Let me transition that over. It's not going to be perfect, but it should work. Um, so as you. All right, so we're going to make that a little bit bigger. It looks really grayed out for some reason. I don't know why that is. Um, looks really grayed out. Close you. That's because there's an ad on the stupid website. All right. <laughs> so, so we can see here, um, and I could probably bring up the images, you know, like the, the tweet itself, but confronting racism, understand what it means to be white, challenging what it means to be racist. It says to be less white is to be less oppressive, be less arrogant, be less certain. Be less defensive, be less ignorant, be more humble, listen, believe, break with apathy, break with white solidarity. In the U.S. and other Western nations, white people are socialized to feel that they are inherently superior because they're white. Research shows that by age three or four, children understand that it is better to be white. Try to be less white. So, so apparently that's, that's the issue. So I had two or three comments on, uh, I think it was on the Facebook post that I made, where it said, uh, eh, I'm too white. I can't, I can't drink Coke. And, and that's why I of looked this up to find out what the fuck is, why are they saying like, is this because Coca-Cola is in Atlanta? Like, I don't get it. Like, is, is that the, is that how we're tying it? I don't know. And then I found this and like, I actually like this message. I think the message is on point. I think they just did a really stupid thing by saying, trying to try to be less white. Right. Like, and, and when B and I were talking about this a little bit before, I was like, they just should have coined a phrase for it. Right. Instead of saying, to be less white is to be all of these things. What if they just said to be a hippopotamus is to be all this stuff? Be a hippopotamus, man. We want you to be a hippopotamus. Because if you're a hippopotamus, that means that you're less oppressive and you're less arrogant, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But as soon as you say try to be less white, now all of a sudden, you know, the idiots with a 12 IQ are saying, whoa, I love being white. Being white's the best. You can't tell me to be less white. Well, you want to be more black? You want to be one of those end people? I'm white. I'm not drinking Coke. I'm going to drink Pepsi. Take that. Like that's, that's, that's where these idiots are going to go, right? So I think the message is on point. I think it's just very, very poorly done. And the fact that it got broke out, I mean, yeah. So I don't have an issue with Coke, except that they changed the Coke Zero flavor because they're fucking assholes. But outside of that, like this, I, I don't have a big issue with it. I just think that the messaging is very, very poor. Yeah, the messaging is challenging. And I feel like we have like eight clips now for this episode. <laughs> like, it was already one, decided. I, I almost, it was already decided. You're the clip this week. I almost tacked on to the end of that, but I didn't. And again, it's probably a good thing because my mouth <laughs> might have gotten me in trouble. But like, yeah, I think if they would have used, like you said, any other thing, like we want you to be a, a welcoming person. We want you yeah. to be, you know, I'll use radically welcoming or All -inclusive. whatever. Wait yeah, all inclusive, like yeah. something. And obviously people are still going to nitpick that because again, that's what people do. Like yeah. we're living in a society where people nitpick for the sake of nitpicking. Like they nitpick to hear themselves talk. But Well, well here's the thing is because, and I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't want to paint myself as a beacon of how people should be because don't be like me. But like, when I look at this, I see, try to be less white and my mind goes, Whoa, what does that mean? And then I read everything, I digest it, and I say, oh, okay. So what they're trying to say is, don't be these things. They just label it as try to be less white. Okay. I mean, I can agree with that message. The problem is a lot of people see, be less white, go fuck yourself. And they're not going to read yeah. anything else. Assuming, exactly. assuming they can read. That's a stretch. But assuming that they can, they're not even going to look into the rest of it. It's just try to be less white, fuck you. I'm not going to do that. And then well, it's like you're the, done. It's like the Dr. Seuss thing where it's like, oh, we want to be more inclusive of our readers. So we don't yeah. want to have yeah. Dr. Seuss be, you know, known for these things. Oh, well, you're 
canceling Dr. Seuss. It was, it's kind of like there was yeah. the, this is again, kind of a side thing, but a side conversation. The tweet that I sent you today where the person was like, I hate cancel culture. There was never really anything in the Bible about being canceled. And somebody was <laughs> like, yo, like the first story in the Bible was Jesus canceling two people over an apple. Where yeah. were you? <laughs> we're not, we're not going to stretch into religion at this point because then this podcast will take 17 hours. So, right. But that I, was still funny. So it was funny. B, I think it's time it now. It is. It's time for us to put away our anger, put on our stretchy pants and get to random rankings. Where are so, we going this week for random rankings, B? Well, you know, Steve Nass says that we need to voluntarily make decisions that are in the best interest of our public health. So at some point, maybe, just maybe, we can think about going to the Wisconsin State Fair. And Ooh, baby. The, and the Wisconsin State Fair starts this week, and the State Fair has some new food. Yeah, so, I like food. That's why I'm fat. Because, you know, we like to eat. We are going to go through and we are going to draft some of these new foods from the list of Wisconsin State Fair foods, brother. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> How many are we drafting? I had not thought that far in advance because my brain has been on fire all day. Why don't we, why don't we do five each? All right. Do we want to split it into, well, there's not really a category. So I think we just Yeah, there's do not five. really categories. We just take... And again, you kind of have to, I, and I'll tell you what my strategy is as I go along. And I'm sure you'll tell me what your yeah. strategy is when you go along. So yeah. who shall go first? And should we pull up the list here for the, uh, it's such a huge list. I don't know if we can. What about the PDF? Can we pull up the PDF or the PDF might be, it's going to be so small. Too. Yeah. I don't think anybody's going to okay. be able to see it. So I think we'll just have to describe okay. what it is. Cause they all have a all right. description. Cool. Um, I did the Sounds randomizer good. and Brian won. So Brian, you get yes. to go first. Okay, so <laughs> now my thought about this is this is going to the state fair. So as I started to look at this list, the first thing that I did is I deleted everything that I knew that I would hate, which basically was everything that had seafood in it. <laughs> and I went through and I deleted all of like the boring stuff that I could get any time right yeah like oh you can get shepherd's pie great love shepherd's yep. pie shepherd's pie fair. isn't really a state fair nope. kind of thing nope. but for my number one draft pick i am going to go with a barbecue stuffed sweet potato Ooh. That, ladies and gentlemen boys and girls non-binary everybody that is a sweet potato loaded with pulled pork smoked portobello mushrooms, cheese, pico de gallo, and drizzled with barbecue sauce. So that is my first pick. That sounds legit. State fair. Wiggs, thanks for sharing the uh, PDF. For those who are listening after the fact, um, there'll be a link to the story in, uh, in the show notes so you can check it out there. All right. Um, I've got a list. I, I, I made my own list. I got a list of 10 to 15 of them. So I should be good to pick from my list for the whole time. I did not put them in order though. So I need to like quickly figure that out. But there was one that stood out to me. And I said, this is the one that Brian might steal from me. Don't take it. Don't do it. So uh, just because he knows what I like. So I, I got to get, I think he's leaning. I think he's thinking about this one down to the bottom. And that's not the one that I'm going to get. Instead, I am going to take the everything bratzel. That was going to, that was one of mine. The but everything I, again, bratzel like, is a Johnsonville bratwurst wrapped in pretzel dough topped with roasted garlic, everything bagel seasoning. Huh? Yep. Come on. That's, yeah, that, that's legit. I was torn. I was torn between that and the sweet potato, but I figured again, the bratzel, like that's a little like, like, is that fairy? Definitely. Cause it's like yep. a, bready thing. and i think it's going to but be I'm... on a stick i figure it's going to be on a stick it didn't say that but i figure it's probably on a stick all right so are we doing snake or am i going no you go all right so now i'm looking through this list there's a lot of spicy stuff for you so i feel yes. like you can kind of pay with that now this is one that i know i'm gonna hate myself after eating it 
but I also feel like if we do end up going to the state fair, we're going to end up trying this and just cutting it in <laughs> half. And then you're going to have to go to the bathroom like six minutes later <laughs> because putting my business the, all up on the, on the podcast. I, I will too. So don't worry. But this is the glazy boy. It's uh, a burger that was on my list on two grilled greebies, glazed donuts with cheese, slow smoked pork loin raspberry mustard and pickled jalapenos now again i'm not a big fan of mustard i'm not a big fan of jalapenos but both of these things are probably gonna mix well with that really sweet donut crust remember well i don't know i don't know if you went to the fair when they had like the krispy kreme burger i did like, but i was, never got one i always wanted one and i never got one like it was fine like it wasn't great but like this again like this is something that i feel like i might have to try dude if we go we got to get this let's it's a first of all it's a burger like i'm already sold and then it's a burger on donuts which i never have had a chance to do and then you're adding cheese i mean come on this is wisconsin and you're adding fucking slow smoked pork loin what and then there's whole grain mustard which i love and then there's pickle jalapenos which i love Dude, this is amazing. Like, I got to try this. Oh my God. That sounds, that sounds really good. All right, are you, are you copying these over by the way? So I have a list. I did not. Okay. <laughs> I'm marking mine. So as long as you mark yours. Yeah, I'm marking there. mine. All right. Um, so the, the one that I thought be my steal now I get to take. So I figure the best thing to have with my bratwurst more bratwurst the wisconsin tots baby tater tots topped with brats sauerkraut and beer cheese now this one's gonna definitely make me sick to my stomach but i'm gonna love every bit of it nice that was one that was on my uh that was on my list but oh, i decided man. against it so oh man now I'm torn because I see the one down here that I forgot about. Ooh, it's hurting me real bad. <laughs> All right. So, oh, man. So there's so many good options here, right? Like we could literally draft like 12 of these. So yeah. I think I am going to, as you kind of see me scrolling through my list here, I think that I... Oh man, I don't know. Oh, that seems a little boring. Let me come back to. All right, so this is a little unconventional. Okay. But let's say, let's say you know we roll out of the house around you know eleven o'clock when the fair opens. Haven't eaten breakfast yet. Got to get a good, nice little base in your belly oh, before I you go. I and, saw the breakfast one. Yeah, yeah. You know, drink some beer. We're going with the ultimate breakfast quesadilla, which is a quesadilla stuffed with scrambled eggs, bacon, sausage, ham, hash browns, cheese, and what sealed it for me? Sausage gravy. Oh, okay. All right. I feel you. That sounds legit. Yeah, I saw a breakfast quesadilla and I just like, I'm not getting breakfast food. So I just, I didn't even read through it. But yeah, no, that sounds good. That sounds good. Uh, I, I already have earmarked the one that's going to be my last pick because there's 0% chance that Brian picks it. So I can yeah. save that one. Um, I mean, we can keep going too. I have like a whole list here. Of like I bet you do. Things, so. uh, I think number three. Ooh, I don't think I want that one. I mean, if you have tater tots, I think you need to have some fries to go with it, right? You might as well go all in on the carbs. If I'm uh -oh. gonna die, I'm gonna enjoy it. Good we're going night. we're going for the pork bowl. Okay. It I, is I a bowl. It is a bowl filled with sidewinder fries. I don't know what that is. Some kind of fries. Those are really good. And I then they put before. barbecue pulled pork on top of it. But as if that wasn't enough, they add some ale house cheese sauce. But no, 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 there's more. Then there's bacon bits. And then it says crispy topping. I don't know what the fuck a crispy topping is, but whatever it is, it's going on the top. 
So there we go. All of these sound disgustingly delicious. Exactly the point. <laughs> That's the point of the state fair here, isn't it? Oh, man. Now, I, I have to decide again. Like, now you've got me craving fries again, right? But I know that I already have fries. There, there's some, so many other things on here that I want to draft. I, I don't know. know. You like, got to choose. That's why we only did five, me. man. You got to pick right. the best of the best. Just don't pick that one because that one right there is mine. I want that one right there. All right. I'm going to do this one. I don't think that you would take this one, but you might. But I'm going to take it anyway. This could kind of be a dessert, but not really, but kind of. The peanut butter squealer. It is a maple infused breakfast sausage baked inside of a Belgian waffle. So think oh, things okay. in a blanket, except like a giant one. Yeah. Smothered in peanut butter and topped with bacon. Interesting. Okay. I'm not a big peanut butter guy, so I would not choose that one. That's good. That sounds good. I just realized that the um, old man Wiggum is a big fan of your pick. I was going to pick a dessert one, so maybe we should do six because I okay. need to get a dessert one in here. Um, <laughs> but before the dessert, I got to take this one because I, I just have a sneaking suspicion this one could be on B's list. Uh, and the fact that he hasn't taken it yet is pretty amazing. So I am going to take the chicken bacon ranch cheese curd taco. Yes, that's yep, right. That you heard me correctly. That was going to be my last pick. Chicken bacon ranch cheese curd taco. This is a fried tortilla shell. We fill it with grilled chicken and some bacon and some ranch flavored cheese curds. We're going to top that with some iceberg lettuce and some ranch dressing. Boy, oh boy. Like, I'm good. I mean, I'd have to add some sort of, like, pico or some hot sauce or something. But that's that's pretty legit. I'm happy with that pick. Hmm. All right. So I've got two that I'm looking at here, right? And, like, so here is one, as an example, that sounds delicious, but I'm totally not taking it because this is not a fair food. Char-grilled burger with cheese, lettuce, tomato, Thousand Island dressing. It's a Big Mac. Yeah, you can get... It's a Big Mac, right? <laughs> so we're not taking that. Like, is it probably delicious? Yes. yes. Am I taking it? No, I am not. But mm. what I am taking, I'm torn between two. But I think that I'm going to go with the pizza poutine waffle fries. Yes, sir. That was on my list, Waffle too. fries topped with cheese curds, Parmesan marinara, and pepperoni crumbles. Yes, sir. All right. So what is your dessert pick there, sir? Uh, I am going to take the dessert pick because I'm saving that other one because I don't need to take it because you won't take Have it. Have you only taken five then? Okay. I've so taken four. This will be number five. Got you. Got you. Uh, so my dessert pick is the deep fried pineapple express, baby. No! Yay! <laughs> it is deep fried pineapple rings rolled in coconut, sweet panko breading. I'm guessing that's when they deep fry it. And then they're covering it with some pina colada glaze and some powdered sugar. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Killing me. All right. Now, I, I really thought that you were going to go with the whiskey fudge, the dark chocolate fudge infused with four blended whiskeys. I didn't see that one. I'm going to get that, too, when we go to the state <laughs> fair. <laughs> All right. So I guess I have to take a dessert now. So dessert options for you, loyal reader and listener. There's cookie dough on a stick. There's s'mores puff pastry. There's s'mores bark, which sounds delicious, by the way. There is a pie fritter, which is a pastry filled with cherry or apple filling. There was a gluten-free no. funnel cake. I love funnel cake. I ain't eating a gluten-free funnel no. cake. But what, what about, I am. What about the hot chocolate s'mores cake? That you, you, you jumped the shark, oh. sir. Well, That's you, were exactly... you were listing them all off. I was like, you're missing the best one. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to draft. The hot <laughs> chocolate s'mores cake, which is a soft chocolate cake filled with gooey marshmallow and a graham crust base drizzled with chocolate. Yeah, yeah. It was a toss up for me between that one and the, the Pineapple Express. Like They both sound delicious. Man, we're going to ingest about you know, 67,000 calories. Probably. If we go to the state fair. All right. So you've got six total, right? I do. All right. So then I get my last pick. 
and this is the one I didn't have to pick early at any point. We could have picked every single option on this entire list, and this would have been the very last one, and I would have got it because B wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole, and it is hot chicken and waffle fries, baby. That was on my list, actually. Get out I of was, town. That was, no, it literally was. I just deleted it off the list. Crispy fried boneless chicken breast tenders dipped in spicy buffalo sauce, which Brian would say you can't do that. Served over seasoned crispy waffle fries topped with garlic ranch, bacon crumbles, and then fries, it says, which fries are already in there. But yeah. So here's wow. my thought with that, right? It's the state fair. What they consider spicy yeah. probably isn't really that spicy. So right. that's why it was on my list. That's fair. <laughs> but so to recap, if anyone is interested, if you're coming to the state fair with me, we're starting with the ultimate breakfast quesadilla. We then are gonna move on to the, uh, let's see, we'll probably move on to the, ooh, there's a lot of sweet stuff in here. <laughs> the pizza <laughs> poutine waffle fries. Then we're gonna go with the uh, glazy boy. Then we're gonna go ahead and get us that little peanut butter squealer. We're going to cleanse our palate with the barbecue stuffed sweet potato. And then we're going to end the day with the hot chocolate s'mores cake. Nice. I'm trying to create my list here. And I think I got an extra one here that I didn't actually get. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven here. Uh, so Stop I think, the count. I think that, uh, <laughs> what's the one that I didn't get? Do you, no, these are all ones that I got. I don't know. I'm confused. Um, we're going to start off with the everything. We're going to do probably in the order I did. So the everything brothel, we're going to start with. We got to get that bratwurst in before we're too full to eat anything else. Uh, and then we're going to do those Wisconsin tots. We're going to eat those at the same time so we get all the brat punching us in the face. Uh, then we're going to then we're gonna chill out a little bit. That's when we're going to go with the, uh, the Pineapple Express. We're not going to save that for the end. We're going to do that right then. Uh, my chicken and waffles are in there twice. That's why. Uh, so then once we get that uh, get that dessert in, we cleanse our palate. Now we need to punch ourselves in the face. So we're getting the hot chicken and waffle fries, and we're going to get extra, extra buffalo sauce. And then we're going to take that extra buffalo sauce, and we're going to carry it right into that ch chicken, bacon, ranch, cheese curd taco, taco, because they're not putting hot sauce on that thing, so we got to bring our own. And then we're going to end it up with uh, my tacos in here twice too. So I don't know what the last one was. The pork bowl. Then we're going to finish with the pork, pork bowl. bowl. We're gonna take the pork bowl and uh, a bunch of barbecue cheese sauce stuff and carry it on into the sunset. I think it's good. So that is our random ranking. Wiggum wants to try the gator claw on a stick. I was, you know, I would totally try that too. But before we do that, we need to listen to what Brian's extra point is. So Brian, what do you got? Oh my God, you got a huge image on your thing. That's what you got. There you go. <laughs> That's better. Do I? All right. Oh man. I just noticed that. Okay, so now I'm, now I'm smaller. So, as you may have noticed when I kind of blacked out during one of the topics today, I have been filled with 50% rage and 50% dread all day. After I got done working, I only had a little bit of time before this podcast started. And, of course, as I leave my workstation at home, it's raining. I've really been enjoying going for walks and kind of, you know, decompressing after my day and things like that. So after I ate dinner, like it wasn't raining anymore. So I was like, I need to go for this walk before we do this podcast. And I check my app and it's like, oh, it's going to rain in 30 minutes or whatever. And I'm like, fuck it. I don't care. I'm going for this walk. I need it. So I go, I get outside, I'm walking, I'm hearing all the you know, thunder, and it sounds like it's going to rain, and I'm just walking, and I'm walking, and I'm decompressing, and it's thundering, and I'm hearing it, but there's no rain, and I walk, and I walk, and I do a shorter loop than I normally do, because I know i got to come back and do the podcast, but I made it home, and it didn't rain, and this actually was a very valuable kind of metaphor and learning experience, because there's always going to be a storm around you, whether it's a literal storm, a metaphorical storm, a, you know, storm that you've created for yourself. But the only thing that you have control over is your actions. 
How are you taking care of yourself? How are you moving through the storm? How are you doing what you need to do to keep yourself moving and keep yourself in a good place? So I needed that because it's been a tough day and there's tough days ahead because there are a lot of people out here who are so selfish that they can't think of other people. And I'm someone who I like to think that I'm a person who thinks about other people and puts the needs of other people first. But for one moment in time, I put myself first. I took that walk and I needed it. So if you ever feel selfish for doing something for yourself, don't. Because sometimes that's just what you need. And that's what I got today. Hey, thanks, B. Oh, look, my camera's not set up right. Yeah, let me try to fix that. It's a giant square, but I, there's nothing there. I thought you're, I got it. You're John fixed. Cena. Burp. I can't. I can't do it because we don't want to get you. Right. No DMCA. <laughs> uh, let so me copy this it. thing real quick. Yeah. So chat. You know, it was almost perfect. So you almost didn't even know. But uh, my my camera has been. Oh wait, it is in there. I don't know where my camera's at, man. It's all screwed up. All right. Well, you don't get a camera, I guess. Sorry. Oh, that's why. I was, oh, that's the right thing. Try that. Let me come in. Oh, look, shit, I'm there. Great. We're back. Studio mode off. All right. Um, I need to move it around a little bit, but it's there. So, so Brian talked about um, take care of yourself and do what you need to do. And, you know, that's all I do because I'm a selfish bastard. But... You know, another thing that is important, uh, and, you know, I talked last week about empathy, right? Uh, think about the position that you're in. You know, think about your privilege uh, and maybe watch what you say. So we talked, uh, was it last week, about Simone Biles and that she decided to, to step away. She withdrew from a bunch of the competition. She wasn't feeling it. She wanted to protect her mental health. Um, well, somebody asked this tennis dude, what's his name? Novak, uh, Novak Djokovic, I think it is, something like that. Um, one of the best tennis players in the world, asked him about that. His quote, and I quote, if you're aiming to be at the top of the game, you better start learning how to deal with pressure and how to cope with these moments, with those moments on the court and off the court, is what he said. And then on Saturday, he got so pissed off, he slammed his racket into the net, into the fucking pole. He threw it into the stands, threw a fucking fit like a goddamn 12-year-old baby. And then his response afterwards is, we're all human beings. Sometimes it's difficult to control your emotions. So let me just say, uh, and, and, and I'm hoping that I can say this clearly enough that there's no confusion as to what I really mean. Go fuck yourself. Like, fuck you, dude. Like, that's it. That's all I got. Fuck you. Show some empathy. Understand where people are coming from, right? So first of all, fuck that guy. Second, building off what I said last week is, is we need to be more empathetic. And this includes me. This includes me when we're talking about Coca-Cola and I'm like, well, these guys have a 12 IQ and they don't know how to read. That's me being a little bit of an idiot. I mean, I might've been right, but it's also me not having empathy of being in that person's shoes. I don't know that I want to be in the shoes of somebody who's a white supremacist, but you know, whatever. I think all of us need to show more empathy. We need to understand where other people are coming from. We need to try to, to understand the, the situation where people are in, right? Like we speak a lot about different things that, that, that don't necessarily impact Brian and I, right? We talk about systematic racism, which uh, doesn't really impact me, but I can put myself in the shoes of people and try to understand what it's like to have that impact me, right? And that's what we need to do. We need to be more empathetic. We need to slow down a little bit. We need to try to experience things and understand things from a different point of view. And then, you know, Brian and I have had a lot of conversations about, well, what, what do we do? How do we fix this? How do we make a change? How do we you know, just not yell from the rafters, but how, but how do we actually try to make a difference? And and the number one step in all of that is empathy. You you have to be able to understand another person's point of view, and and then and then you can have that conversation. So, uh, I guess that's that's my my point to all of you, but also to myself is we just need to be a little bit more empathetic. That's what I got. Be. B's on mute, I think. I was on mute. I was deciding if I wanted to be a 
We random D O T W, but I decided not to be. And instead, I will now tell you where you can find us. You can find Skonzi on Linktree. I'm not sure what that is or where that is, but oh, Skonzi yeah. has one. So you can find him there. You can find me on Twitter at LandmarkMKE. You can find me in my office getting COVID. You can find Skonzi on Twitter at Skonzi. You can find us on Facebook, Almost Qualified Productions. You can find us on Twitter, AQ underscore P-R-O-D. We are in your favorite podcast app as we random. So please find us where you want to. Uh, take care of yourselves. We hope you all have a great week. Do you have any other thoughts for the people, Christopher? No, just get out to that state fair and get you some of that food. The glazy boy. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Six people. I feel like that just needs to be the theme of our podcast. <laughs> Thank you.